Hello, my name is Melissa Boone and I am the Chief of Staff at 343 Industries. I'm responsible for making sure our studio runs smoothly, but before that, I was a video games researcher. When I was growing up, I always loved math. It was one of my favorite classes. And math is actually used a lot in science because it's how we know our results are real. I also really like thinking about how people think and act and work with each other. And so that led me to the field of psychology, which is how I got into being a video games researcher. I've also played video games my entire life. So ever since I could hold a controller in my hands and that started my interest in games. To me, a scientist is just a person who likes to ask questions. So if you like to ask things like, how does that thing work like that? Or why do we do things that way? Then you're probably already a scientist. Even if you don't see yourself as a scientist, I encourage you to try. Maybe you just haven't found the kind of science that you love the most yet. I also didn't see myself as a scientist when I was growing up, but I tried lots of different kinds of sciences until I found one that I really love. So I did science fair projects all through middle and high school. I asked lots of different questions, like can people tell the difference between two different kinds of drinks? Or what happens if you change how you feed animals? Scientists still do science fairs these days. We just call them conferences. But it's very much the same thing as a science fair where we get to present our work to other people. So math is really important, and the math classes you take will help prepare you to be a scientist. But the other classes outside of math are also important, like English, because communication is important to scientists. That's the only way that other people are going to know what you found out, so it's really important to do well in your English classes as well. Right now, as a games researcher, I do research or conduct studies in order to understand how people play our games. So we want to make sure that our games are fun, and we also want to make sure that you know how to play them as well. One of the things that's really important to be, if you would like to be a video games researcher, is creative. Scientists use creativity all the time to think about how to answer the questions that they really want to know. But especially in video games, we have to be creative so that we can help the video game developers come up with different ways to solve some of the problems that we find. It's also really good to like to talk to people. Games researchers talk all day long. Not only do we talk to the people that we do research studies with, but we also have a lot of conversations with our game developers to help them understand where they need to fix things or make things more fun. One of the games I worked on was Minecraft. And Minecraft is played by people of all ages, but we have lots of kids that play that game. So I would spend a lot of time talking to kids about how they felt about Minecraft, having them play parts of Minecraft, and give me feedback on the game. And I'm really thankful for all of the kids that I've worked with in that because they were really honest with me about how they felt about the game, and that made it easier for me to help make the game more fun. One of the things that really excites me about the work I get to do is making games accessible to everybody who wants to play them. Them, including people with disabilities. There are lots of people who might not be able to see or hear the way that a lot of other people can, and so we do research to help understand what kinds of things can we put in the game to make our games easier for them to play. One of the things that's hard about my current work is when people aren't very nice about how they give negative feedback. Negative feedback is really important, and we need it and love it in order to make our games better, but it's best if it's given politely. One of the questions that people ask me all the time is, do I get to play games at work? And the answer is yes. I play games at work all of the time. So one, I need to play the game that we're all making together so that I understand how it works and I know what questions to ask to people when I'm trying to find out if the game is fun. But we also play other games at work too because sometimes games that are similar to ours will help us understand how to make our game more fun as well. So now I'm going to answer some questions from students who came to Pacific Science Center on a field trip. So Noah in second grade asks, what is your favorite part of making games? Honestly, my favorite part of making games is getting to meet all of the people who love and play the games that I make. Everybody always gets really excited when I tell them that I work in games, and then they want to talk about games, and I love that. So Dylan in third grade asks, can kids test games? Yes, we want to test our, our games with kids so that we can make sure that they're fun to you too. And we need to test our controllers in your hand to make sure that you can hold them, and we need to make sure that you can set your settings exactly the way that you like them. So, Ask your trusted adults at home for permission and for help, and then you can visit the link in the description box below to sign up for one of our studies. Maya in second grade asks, what science do you use when you make games? It's a science that's called psychology. Psychology is a science of how people's minds work, how they think, how they behave with other people, and we need to know all of those things so that we can understand how people are thinking about our games. Psychology also helps us learn how to ask questions in special ways so that we can make sure we're getting people's true feelings. 
We also learn the science of how people's minds work so we can help explain the results of our research to our game developers. So, for example, if people keep getting lost in the same spot, we can understand why they're getting lost in the same spot so that we can tell our developers how they can fix it. So Zoe in the second grade asks, how many people work on games? Lots of people work on games. Some games, like Minecraft and Tetris, were made originally by only one person. But as games get bigger and bigger, you need a bigger team to make the game. You need software developers, people who can write the code of the game. But you also need artists who will make the art for the game, designers who will decide how the game looks and feels, and people to make all the music and audio sounds for the game. There are lots of other roles, too. So sometimes games can have hundreds of people working on them. I always say if you want to see how many people work on a game, the next time you beat your favorite game, take a look at the credits and see all the people who make the game happen. Ian from the third grade says, what do I need to learn to make games? So it's helpful if you know psychology. Like I said before, you also need to know math. Math is how we know that our results are real and not just by random chance. It really also helps if you know how to play games. If you really like a game, try to think about why do you like it? What is it that makes it fun? We need people from all kinds of different backgrounds to become scientists in the video games industry. The only way that we're going to understand what makes games fun for everyone is if we have lots of different kinds of people studying and making games. So no matter what kind of background we are from, I hope you consider a career in video games research. Thank you for joining me today and remember to stay curious.